So if the sun sets you free, you will be free indeed. And our essential thought, when a person is bound, it's difficult for him to set himself free. his children to be free. It's not his will for his children to be continuously trapped and in bondage. Bondage is the work of the devil. He is the one who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. There are many ways that people can be in bondage and not be physically bound and in a prison cell. A man can be bound in his mind like the man who lived among the tombs in the graveyard or bound like the woman who had an infirmity spirit. Which he had bowed, which had her bowed down. A person could also be bound by debt, like the widow whose husband died and left her in debt. Whatever the case was or could be, God wants his children to be free and walking and living in victory. Amen. Amen. Okay, our lesson gave us three examples of people who were in bondage. We may add a couple more. Because really when you read through the Bible, you see a lot of people who were caught by something. But it took the Lord and the word of the Lord in order to set them free. And the same thing happens for us. Um, like I said, the Lord doesn't want you in bondage. He wants you free. You know, that's why the word from our central verse tells us who the Son is set free is free indeed. And, you know, our intro really gave a good summary of the lesson about there's many ways that people can be bound. But first, you have to realize that you are bound. Because one of the things that the devil does is that, not even the devil, just life in general, you can be bound by something, but it makes you feel like you're having a good time when you're doing it. And, you know, the one prison that's hard to see is the prison that you're in, because it makes it look enticing. It makes me think of like a black light. Like if you've ever been in a club and you know it's dark and they have the black light on and it makes all these neon light colors glow. It makes it fun to be in, but you still realize you're in darkness. It just makes it more enjoyable for you. And that's really what sin is. Sin, it, it makes your bondage enjoyable, but you don't realize that, how much trouble that you're in. You don't realize how close to death that you really are. Because it, all it does is that it lets you have a good time doing what you want to do, saying what you want to say, and anything else you're big and bad enough to do. But you don't realize that there's a better way that while you're doing this thing that you're just basically letting your life go away. The life that the Lord has um, ordained for you to have. Um, starting in Luke chapter 13. It's talking about um, the woman with the spirit of infirmity. 
Um, you can get a fuller picture of that if you go to Mark chapter 5, uh, 25 through 34, and Matthew 9, verses 20 through 22. Um, one thing about the Gospels is a lot of time, a lot of times you'll see an example, it'll be in some of the other Gospels also, so you have to put them all together to get a real understanding of what's going on. <coughs> and so, with this woman, you know, if you're familiar with the story, that she had, you know, a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. And she was bent over and could not raise herself up. Uh, she's reading from verse, from uh, Luke 13, verse 11, uh, 12. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loose from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Um, is it the same one? This may be a different one. There's another one with, um, we know about the woman with the issue of blood. I gotta check to make sure that's the same one. But she was going through a, a similar situation where she had spent all her money with doctors. The doctors couldn't do it. Nothing else she went through could do it. But she made up in her mind to say, when she saw Jesus, that if she could just touch the hem of his garment, that she would be made whole. And so she goes through the crowd, she touches the hem, and Jesus knows it because he feels virtue come out of him, power. And so he turns back and says, well, who touched me? And his disciples are saying, what do you mean who touched you? We're in this whole crowd of people. There's everybody touching me, but this is different. There's a difference when somebody is, you know, just placing their hands on you, but there's another thing when something, somebody got something out of you. And so, when he turns around, she makes herself known, but she's shaking because in Leviticus 15, it tells you, uh, verse 19, it, tells, it talks about if a man or a woman has a discharge in that chapter that they have to be separated, that they're unclean so they can't be around people because if people touch them, they're gonna be unclean also. And so, and during this time, that even though this is the New Testament, they're still operating in Old Testament ways because Jesus hasn't fulfilled the law yet until he, you know, he dies and he comes back. And so she could have gotten a lot, in a lot of trouble for being in this crowd, touching all these people, but she took a chance. She acted on her faith and she was rewarded because she was made whole. And so, you know, we'll see in the other couple of issues is that when we want to be restored, it takes an action. A lot of people go, they say they want something, but they won't move to do it. You know, people come to church and with a let's see attitude about, well, we'll see if Jesus can heal me. No, it's not that. You gotta come with an expectation that Jesus can do what he said he can do and that he is who he said he is. And that way, that's why they tell you, don't just expect it, but walk in it. You have to walk in your healing. You have to walk in your deliverance. You have to walk in your salvation. You have to believe those things. You know, like you said, we believe that he's, that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so if you want to receive those things, you're not going to get that being double-minded. That means we don't have a, a plan B or C or D. You know, if I believe the Lord's going to do it, then I'm going to walk like he's done it. I'm going to walk like I have it. You know, the same thing we were told in prayer that if you believe when you ask the Lord for something, if you believe that you have it, that you do. Yes. Now, that's the whole thing. Do you believe that you have it or are you just hoping you get it? You know, it's all about a mindset. You know, while we don't see a lot of healing and a lot of deliverance and things now, that people are hoping instead of just, you know, setting their mind to believe that the Lord's word is true. That if I ask for it, I got it. It doesn't mean I'm going to get it right now. It may take some time depending on what I'm asking for. But I have it. You know, God's not, you know, God's not a man that he can lie. You know, it says let the word of God be true in every man alive. So if God hasn't lied for anyone else he's dealt with, you're not going to be the first person he breaks his word. You know, that's the trust that we have to have in the Lord. And so, you know, like this woman's dealt with this, this issue for a long time. But even though we tell the word tells us that everything has a season, you know, there's a time for everything. You know, even though it's rough for us to go through, there's a lot of heartache and pain in it. But when the time comes, you know, you're going to receive what you need from the Lord. And then it's also going to be to a point where everyone else can see what you received also. So, you know, one thing I've learned about waiting on blessings is that it's not just for you, it's for other people around you also. So if you, 
say if you've been struggling financially for a while and the, the Lord creates a way and blesses you with a lot of money, it's not just for you, it's for you to benefit other people around you also. So we're going to get you out of debt, but the Lord wants us to circulate the things that we have. So whatever he does to us, he, want, he wants to do through us. So if the Lord blessed you, then it's your responsibility to bless someone else. And then in turn, it's their responsibility to bless someone else also. So if the Lord heals you, it's your responsibility to go and tell what the Lord has done for you. Because even though most, most people may not believe it, there's somebody in there that will hear your story, hear your testimony, who knows what you've been through and seen. Like, you know, hey, she, she doesn't walk in the same way she was last week. And then when they tell you tell what the Lord done for you, it gets them excited. And so, well, if it worked for them, it can work for me too. See, not only that, it's not just that the Lord wants to do this for you. The Lord may want to do more for you. But it's about you. You have to initiate that contact. You have to, you have to be the one that goes to the Lord and trust him and say, well, Lord, I need this. I'm here. And believe that he'll do what he said he's going to do. Um, just like our lesson talked about the man that was um, among the tombs in the graveyard. And which, you know, the story tells us that there were two men that were demon possessed, but only one came and ran to Jesus, and you know bowed down and was trembling, and was like, "Well, Lord, are you why are you here? Don't torment us before the time." And so he they asked for permission to get cast out into this herd of pigs, and so the Lord gives them permission. Which you know you have to understand this: if you're demon possessed. If the demons are trembling over the Lord and they're asking the Lord for permission to do things, how much powerful is the Lord you serve over them, over the devils and the demons of this world? Question. Yeah. That's true. Because I always preach, it was two of them, right? Mm -hmm. But one of them got healed. Say one got killed? One got healed. But one got healed, yeah. The other one did not get healed. Right. Yeah, because the one that ran to, the one that ran the to Jesus was the one that got yeah, delivered. He, yeah. He got delivered. But the other one, you Yeah, that's another one of those ones where it's, it's spread out because you got different accounts. So, it's, you know, through the Gospels, you get three different accounts of it. So that's why you have to put everything together to get the whole picture of it. But it's also like that, I think the parable where, like, you know, where there's two men or two women standing in the field and one, you know, goes and one doesn't, it's the same thing. One one made a belief, one made an action. He ran to Jesus and got and got uh, what he was looking for. The other person stayed and stayed in the same place they were at. So they can say the Lord wants to do everything for, wants to do these things for you, but you have to initiate it first. Yeah. That's like you in the presence of God, right? Mm -hmm. A great healer, and you miss your blessing. You know what I'm saying? This is God. He can do all things, created all things, know all things. Mm -hmm. You're right there in the presence. When it's time to get your blessing, you don't get your blessing. Yep. Now that's sad. And that's how people come to church. Mm -hmm. They'll be right in the presence of God. You know what I mean? When it's time to worship, you know, God's come to to worship. They don't worship. They don't let it out. They don't give God the glory. When they come, they leave out here. The same way they came in. Or something even worse. Mm -hmm. They're like disappointed. Well, God, we married there. What was there? Yeah. You was here. Yeah, that's why we when we talked about like the teaching and how people have been taught. Some people haven't been taught about they've been just told to worship the Lord, but you haven't been taught how to get into a position where you can worship God. To where when you're because I can tell you to lift your hands and close your eyes. But just because I do that don't mean you thinking about the Lord. You could be thinking about what you're going to eat when you got out of church. <laughs> so, you know, you have to, that's why I say, like, the Bible studies and Sunday school, when you get to that teaching, is where you can focus down on, okay, just focus on the Lord. Just think about what he's done for you. You know, this is a, you know, we're worshiping. So, put your attention on the Lord. Just, you know, say thank you. You ain't got to make a big showing out of it. You can, you can do it internally. But just put your focus on the Lord and you'll find you'll find them. Or even when, you know, people do worship, do praise and worship services. You know, how can, you know, we say you put somebody up here to lead you in worship, but I don't know if you've ever been in a service or not where you've seen people, they start to worship, 
or they start singing a song or whatever, but if the people are not, seem, don't seem like they're doing it along with them, they'll stop and they want to address the people on how they should be and how they should worship the Lord and things like that. But you have to realize that when you're worshiping, like we said, you have to be totally focused on the Lord. I'm not focused on what you're doing. It's not about whether you're clapping your hands with me or you're singing a song with me. You know, they say some things are taught and some things are taught. And worship is something that has to be contagious. So if I'm going to worship the Lord and I'm focused on what you're doing, how can I talk about you and I'm not worshiping the Lord either? Because my attention is not on the Lord. It's on what you're doing. So it, you have to get to a point where I'm worshiping the Lord. You can do whatever you want to do. Now, you can worship the Lord with me or you can sit there and do what you want to do. But I'm going to worship God because I'm up here. Um, think about how David was when David got called to play the spirit off of Saul with the heart. You know, you read it, they brought him in, David came, he got on the heart, did what he was supposed to do. When you read that in um, Samuel, I think that's chapter 1 Samuel 16 or 17. When you read it, you don't see David getting mad or looking at other people because they're not helping him get the spirit off. That's all. That's not what they're there to do. He's there to get the spirit off. He's there to set the atmosphere to where the spirit leaves. And that's the same thing what we do with worship. You're sitting in the atmosphere to where I'm not focused on what the people are doing. I'm focused on God. I'm focused on giving worship and praise to, you know, the Lord who got me through the week. The one who, you know, continues to give me my life, health, and strength and continues to bless my kids and my family and my, you know, my job and everything else. We're focused on that. I ain't got time to focus on whether you're in the mood, whether you want to worship God or not. And if there is something in, if there is a spirit or something in here, it's my job to get set the atmosphere to where the spirit got to go. Yeah. You know, you decide. It's like you decide whether the spirit stays on you or not. Worship the Lord. Get your mind off your troubles and worship God because it's, it could always be worse. And there are people in the world who are experiencing worse than what you are. You know, there's one thing for you know your bank account to be low. There's another thing for somebody to be laying up in ICU, don't know whether they're gonna make it through the next day or not. So you always have to be thankful for where you are and say, Lord, you know, if it hadn't been for you, it could have been me. That's enough reason to pray, to worship the Lord right there. And so that's why you have, it's about keeping your, your attitude and your focus on worshiping the Lord, not, even, not only when you're in church, but even when you're out in the world doing things. Just take a moment and say, Lord, I thank you. You know what? You know what the scripture talk about you should constantly be uh, worshiping? You know what I mean? I noticed that when, when it comes to that, it's hard to just 24 7. But the way to do it is if you at least do it like in the morning, say, to get your devotions, or when you eat your breakfast, thank you, Lord. You know, because uh, by lunchtime, you keep saying, thank you, Lord. A couple more prayers here, you know, pray for somebody here, even though somebody won't buy you, and might look at you mean or hateful. Mm -hmm. you, know, I pray for that you know what I mean? I'm praying for him because I want to say something bad then. So I'm praying for him. You know what I mean? That's how I do it. You look at me real hard in the eyes, and I'll be looking back up like this. But I'm praying. They think I'm looking at a bed. I'm not. I'm praying. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's why I believe when it's talk about you should continuously be uh, in prayer. You know what I mean? Because you don't know what you're going to come against. You don't know what the day might bring back. That's true. You, you need to be prayed up and ready for where for a war You know what I mean? You don't know when you might get that call when something happens. Are you praying? I'm already in prayer with you, dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why you got some people that get woken up in the middle of the night to, to pray, and they don't know why they're praying, but you know the Lord puts it on their heart to pray. And then you find out later that you know somebody was in some trouble, but because of you praying, the Lord brought them out of it, kept them from being you know really hurt or dead or whatever. So you know we just have to be sensitive to that. But not even just like worshiping, not just in our mouth, but worshiping how you live. That's why I say you, the lifestyle that you live is worship too. Because yeah. um, I know Isaiah chapter 58 talks about the Lord's fast. Now, you know, we think his fast is just about, you know, turning down food and other stuff. But his fast was about actually how we live. Are we, are we more concerned with other people than ourselves? You know, while you're turning down this plate, are you more interested in helping other people or are you just like the, um, like I talked about the Pharisees and stuff when they fast they got to make a showing of it where they make their faces look like they're about to pass out and everything are we 
you know, Lord, I'm, you know, I'm depending on you to do something. So, yes, I'm going to take this time set aside where I'm not going to eat or drink or whatever. But then I'm also tending to the needs of people around me. That's, what, that's the Lord's fast. That's what we're doing. So that's a worship too. So like I said, it's not just about, you know, saying, Lord, I thank you, but then are you living a life that he would be saved, that would be proud that you worship? Because a lot of people can give the Lord, you know, thanks for things they do, like, you know, a shout out, Lord, thank you for the raise I got, or Lord, thank you for my new car, and then go off and live like he's, and live like devils. So, you know, like it is, like, you know, the word says, people praise me with the lips, but the heart's so far from me. And so the Lord's looking for someone with the heart after them. And so that's why he wants, when I mean, you know, he wants people that have a heart towards him, which has to be developed, and everybody doesn't have it. Because it takes you caring more about the Lord and caring more about other people than yourself for you to have a heart to serve other people and serve the Lord. But once you realize that, once you serve the Lord and your desires slowly become his desires, to where he knows that the things that we need, but we're more about doing the things of the Lord than more about pleasing ourselves, then you know, you tell this person has a heart after the Lord. That's why that, uh, ask, seek, and knock come in. Mm -hmm. When you ask, seek, and knock, because when you first start off, ask, seek, and knock, it's all for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But when you get older in the Lord, you start to ask for his will. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then it pleases the master, and it will be bouncy. Because now you've got a mind thinking like Christ, a Christ-like mind. Of course, once when you first start off, Lord, I want this, 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 I need this. Then why are you need yeah, just like we talked about um, about advancing the kingdom of God. It's every day. It's just the kingdom of God is advancing. So every day, the kingdom of God is just advancing in us more and more to where we're doing the work of the kingdom rather than the work of ourselves. Like I say, you still go to work, you still do the things you do at home, you still, you know, you got your bills and your family and things to take care of, but we're going to do the work of the Lord because that's our first priority. So the Lord knows, like I said, the Lord knows you got other stuff to do. He ain't totally just unrealistic with his expectation. Like we just talked about, you know, you got jobs, you got kids, you got family, you got spouses and, and everything else is going on. But then when the Lord can place something on your heart to do, you you know, I got to get, I got to take care of this, I got to get this done because I don't know who it's going to affect. And so, and I definitely don't want anybody's blood on my hands because I refuse to say something or do something that I may be the last person they see. You know, you could be the reason they turn, you could, the Lord could use you to be the reason they stop doing what they're doing and they continue to live on, or, you know, you could be the, the last line where if they deny it, they go and something happens to them. But either way it goes, we don't want to be at fault about it. We just all we can do is all we can do is be the messengers that we are. You know, like um, you know, then also it depends on what your motive is too when you're dealing with people. So you you know you ever heard the song you know I think the Williams brothers about sweep around your own front door before you sweep around mine. So she oh, has oh she has <laughs> that's the saying it, it's it's going off with the. Um, with Matthew chapter 7, you know, about, you know, judge not, yes, you be judged. You know, how can you stop your brother with a speck in his eye and you got a plank in yours? Something to that effect. But it all depends on your motive. If I'm in your business because I'm being nosy or I just want to be a hypocrite and I'm doing the same stuff, that's one thing. But if I see that you're living a destructive lifestyle and I'm coming to talk to you about what you're doing, hoping you change your ways, that's another. So... You know, a lot of people use that excuse to say, well, you can't say nothing about me, you worry about yourself. Well, I am worried about myself. But the Lord also tells me that I'm my brother's keeper. So I'm not going to just let you go off destructively and not at least try to encourage you to do right. I'm not going to try to beat you down or condemn you because we're not here to condemn anybody. You know, just like in that passage says about judging, it says, you know, most people, they look at it and say, well, we're not supposed to judge. Yeah. And you're not supposed to judge people by appearances. Now, you are supposed to judge their actions and their words to see if it lines up with God or to protect yourself from 
being involved in something you don't need to be involved with. Yes. So, you know, so if someone like, for instance, you're not judging that person like if, you know, like men and women or the other that is wrong. You're not judging that person, but the Bible speaks of that. So when you say that's wrong, you're not judging that person by saying that, right? Am I right? Because it states in the Bible that that shouldn't be. No, you're not judging them by saying it's wrong. Now, how you treat them depends on whether you're judging them or not. Okay. Now, you know, it's just like, you know, you have those right. those relationships. You know, the Lord still loves them. Now, the yeah, Lord, now still Jesus still died them. for them. So yeah, we're still, you still have to be <clears throat> respectful of those people. We can disagree without being disagreed. Yeah. Which means just because you're doing something that's not pleasing to the Lord doesn't mean it doesn't give me a license to treat you any kind of way. Because, uh, like I said, we can put a list of things together and find out a whole lot of stuff we don't agree on. Right. Like stuff you might, I do that you might not be high on, and stuff you do I might not be high on. But I still have to show the love of Christ to you because I'm still, I'm still going to treat you as the person that you are. Right. Because even though you may be living this lifestyle, that doesn't mean the Lord can't use me to still right. talk to you and present the Lord to you and, like I said, plant those seeds. And then, you know, if somebody else comes by and gets the harvest from it, that's fine. But you don't want to be to a point where you be so disagreeable like a lot of Christians are, where they want to condemn people, well, you're doing this, you're going to hell. That's not going to be the reason to go to hell. You don't not accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he sends you to hell. Yeah. Now, we get you we get you focused on Jesus first. We'll then let the, the Lord start convicting you of those other things. Right. And then now you have to make a decision to change. Because it's one thing for me to come at come at you and say, oh, you're doing this, you're wrong, you're da 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 But most people, what they're going to do, they're going to do it even more because they feel like you're attacking. Now, if I'm just sharing you, now, if I'm just sharing the word of the Lord with you and get you to a point where you're accepting Jesus, right. now when Jesus starts dealing with you about those things, you've got a decision to make. It's not about me. So now you're really bucking against God now. So now you have to make a decision. Do you... Do you want to live this way, or do you want to live a life that's that's holy and righteous? Right. So you can point out to the Bible to them that what the Bible say, right? That's not yeah. good to them. Yeah. You can point it out, but see, a lot of people do it. They point it out to be kind of in an attacking manner, uh, to where like the Lord said this, you you know this yeah. is like, well, yeah, this is what the Lord says. But guess what? Even though you're living this way, you're gonna live, you're gonna do what you want to do anyway. Well, I want to let you know that the Lord loves you, and you know my. My focus is getting your attention on Jesus, getting your attention on the Lord. Once we get your attention on that, then we can start working on this other stuff. Because he's looking for people who are unclean anyway. Those are the ones he comes to, he let them know that the kingdom of God is at hand. Those are the ones that he's knocking on the door, knocking on their heart, hoping they accept him. Because what we do is we try to clean our fish before we catch them. Let's catch the fish first. You're just the messenger. You put the message up. And if, if the Lord's if they if the Lord's already been working on them anyway, at that time they're going to accept the Lord. They're going to accept the Lord, but it's all about in the time that's set. Now, once they do that and they start coming around and you're teaching more and you're still showing this love and everything else, then you start seeing a change and their desires start changing, like we said before. Once your once your desires start changing to where you're more start where you want to do what's pleasing to the Lord other than what's pleasing to the world and everything else. Then you start seeing a change in the person. But you got to do everything and do it in love. Because, like I said, it's, the Word of God is going to do two things. It's either going to bring them in or it's going to drive them away. Now, let the Word drive them away. That's not let us Amen. drive them away. You know, don't, don't let your, your personal feelings or your tone toward them and all that drive them away. Because, like I said, the Word, the word came to separate, you know, bone from marrow. It came to separate households. Because you know why? Because you can't tell truth without offending somebody. Now, I'm just telling you the truth. I'm not here to get you to talk about how you live and how you do this and that. My focus is getting your attention on the Lord. Let the Lord deal with that. That way you can't say, well, you know, you came and attacked me. No, because I want you to be able to come back to me when you got issues, when you need to talk to somebody. I want you to be able to, we got to, I hate to say this, but you got to separate yourself from church folk. Because church folk will talk about you in a minute. But when you got somebody who's truly serving the Lord, even though you're doing wrong, because you know what? I'm going to pray for you. We're going to talk to you, but I'm going to pray for you rather than attack you and condemn you for how you live. 
even though I may know, even though the word says it's wrong and I may know it's wrong, there's a lot of other things that's wrong. Sin is sin. You know, there's a lot of other people who are doing a lot worse than what they are. But we still have to approach you the same. If I got that ear, I don't want to lose that influence because you may be the only godly influence that they have. And you definitely don't want to be the person that turns them off because of, you know, you're, you have a condemning tone or a condescending tone. We just want to talk and just say, you know, I'm here. You know, if you need to talk, if, even if you don't get that far, if you just need to talk to somebody, just call me. We talk. I'm just going to, I'm going to tell you what the word of the Lord says. You take it or leave it. people that stand up for it, but just, you know, like you said, once you speak up against it, now you get labeled as homophobic and, you know, all this other it's stuff. Like, uh, it's like the, the two guys who was getting married, and the dude was a Christian, and about the cake thing. And he said, oh, no, I'm not a Christian. I don't like it. I don't like cake. It's like that. That's the discrimination. So now that takes it to a whole new level. First of all, I don't hate no one. I don't 
I don't care. But I went out my way to show love. We work different shit. Um, and they they made it their business to go to the guy who's taking care of with his wife. It was saying that I always give her a certain look and I don't like them and I hate them. And I promise you, every time I got around them, I put on my best. I conditioned the one, the one young lady would even speak to me. I went out my way to speak to that young lady. But then at the end of the day, I found out that they were going to her saying, I don't respect them, I don't like, um, well, the one particular one that she was supposed to be, I guess, the male figure. And that's not true. You know, but it's just the envy and, and probably her conscience. I had a friend I grew up with, and I remember in my seat, my car, put on a smile and speak to him. He went and told the rest of the crew, every time I see him, I had this nasty look, and like I hated him. And I promise you, I did not. And I was fasting and praying so that I can decrease and put God's best first, you know? So when they called me out on it, the whole group said that I, um, Ron said, this is the way he feels, blah, blah, blah. And I said, no, that's not true, Ron. I said, I remember when I see you that day, I was glad to see you. I remember just what you were talking about. And so they called me out on it in front of everybody. So anyway, he had bought some food. And um, and I said, oh, man, that burger was good. And then he said, here, have a bite. But then he took it and bit it and then turned it around where he bit it at for me to buy it as well. And God said, don't you do it. I said, oh my God. See, seemed like I dig the deeper hole for myself. But I'm like, oh, okay. So anyway, I said, you know what? I took and I said, no, 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 I just want to taste the meat. And I went around the other side and into the middle of the boys game with a picture of piece of meat and ate it. And he, they say that just killed him. But I'm not, I'm, I know that I was in right standing. I know that I was doing what God told me to do and not to do. I learned from experience. My, I remember when I first came to the Lord, my stepfather brought me, he worked on the TV. He was in New York hanging out. He was in Boston hanging out. And he sent chips up to the house. And it was my first year of um, walking with the Lord again from once when I was the girl. So I was 18. So anyway, I got to Apple. And I went to buy it. And God said, don't buy it. Don't do it. I said, no. I'm learning the voice of God. So I bit it and I took my teeth out. Right? I didn't. And when I pulled my plug out, it was full of roaches inside. Mm -hmm. But it didn't have no evidence that where the whole had been eaten into the apple. But I promise you, I said, oh, my God. So I learned the voice of God the hard way. And I definitely wasn't going to bite that sandwich. And I know I heard his voice told me don't do it. <laughs> so, you know, God will use you in all kinds of ways. Sometimes it's not pleasing. I wasn't trying to be stuck to him. But ever since then, I have always, when I see him, let him know how glad I am to see him. But. See, God be working for them in his country. I promise you, I remember seeing that day, and he looked to see me coming, and he, he ran away kind of like it. I couldn't even get to speak to him. But he told me, when I came around the corner, I had a mean face. And I was going to be my children. Maybe that was on my mind, but when I see him, I remember getting into the trying to smile to speak, and he ran away. So, you know, we're going to run into some stuff, everybody ain't gonna like you. You know, they want to kill Jesus in the end of this talk. But he slipped away. You know. So I think even with the Friday parade, parade, I used to go downtown in Newport City. They stand up. Do you got some people that's out there? I say for that job. I wouldn't say the job is for me. 
Those people be carrying on some other. And the other people with the sign, Jesus is the way. They have signs and they waving them. And, you know, you're going you to die and go to hell or you continue that lifestyle. And then you got the people, some of them say something back to you. It, it's chaotic. And then you got some that don't say nothing like, I was, I went to the, oh God, the God told me that I went to see him and my cousin. And then it was going on. And some of them, people's out there, haters, that we went to that um, convention, they were like, where are you going to see him for? So it was, you know, it's a war going on. You just have to be prayerful and know that you're in the right state. I remember a young man, I used to go to minister to him, my problem. Mm -hmm. And I used to go and minister to him all the time. You know, he told me one day, and he just blew me away. I left him here, I left from Clearwater, and went to Sarasota, and I did it often, right? He said, not today, not today. I started to sing, talking about worship. I started to sing, and he told me that song was going to work today. I had to come back. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, um, I'm going, are you serious? But I had got repetitions. I don't know or I, what I had done, done or what I wasn't doing. I wasn't saturating myself with God or something. But he told me it wasn't going to work today. And I did always see. It's three sons I always sing. And I begin to sing that song that got sitting out today. That ain't going to work. Yes, he did. And he was a mental patient. <laughs> so we have to be conscious of God and his leading, his following. Um, I, I, I thought I'd say something to one guy on the side of the road one day. Um, he was going off on us. I told my son, I don't even walk that way. My son, I was like, ooh, I'm not scared of no devil. He went right by the guy. And the guy started asking him for money and, and saying stuff. And he was saying something in another language, you know what he was saying. But I told my, my son-in-law, I said, that's demonic. He just spoke in a, uh, in a demonic tongue. So I say, who are you? What's your name? But before that, I had been talking to him. And I said, well, I tell you what, you go to church. That's, you know, we're going to feed you. We're going to give you a little money. We go to church. But when I say, who are you? That's what my son always said. I said, who are you and what's your name? Guess what he said his name was? Religion. I go to church every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Friday, and in between. Religion, he said is my name. I say, oh my God. If I said all of that one up. So, you know, it just show you where you got to be on your, you got to be ready in position. Like you say, you live in the life. You worship. You paying attention to God. You being led. Um, you know, you are being built up. So when you come before these things, do you know what to do? So telling him to go to church, what was he? Because he went there religious. And um, and I said, and then he said, there was many with him. I said, wow. But you know, if I, if my son I would have went to the back of the car, and avoid him, I wouldn't have had that experience. I wouldn't have known. We wouldn't have known. And I said, you hear the sound? So we, we had to shop on a game, but we used to go out together and, you know, go by stores and, so you have to realize that it's not an attack against you. There, there are problems with God, not you. Right, right. So you can't, every time you they look at you and say you got some kind of mean looking, and you don't. That's what, is the issue. That's what the issue is. And plus, for a lot of people who just in the world are doing many things, they have an issue. It may be just because you're a Christian. Because, you know, not saying all, but, you know, even with like homosexuality. A lot of that comes from sexual abuse from when they were younger, and it may have happened from someone who said they were a Christian. 
So you just have, you may have that feeling about Christians in general. You know, like once again, I'm not saying all because everybody has different reasons for things, but when you talk to a lot of people, a lot, a lot of it comes from that abuse. You know, which is why when the Lord told, um, was given Israel what the laws of things were, why he says don't, you know, don't mess with your, your father's sister or your brother and things like that. You didn't have to give you the whole picture, but a lot of that plays into a lot of decisions that people make now. So, you know, like I said, it just depends on whatever reason you do it. Some people do it because they like it. Some people do it because it's, it's from an underlying problem that hasn't been dealt with. And so, you know, a lot of people are trying to attack symptoms, and we got to get to the problem, to the root problem with people for them to get healed, for them to forgive and, you know, let go, but a lot of people won't. And so it's just like whatever happens, people lash out in different ways. You know, that's why you have people who cut themselves or people who take drugs. It's because of something that happened from somebody who was supposed to protect them and be trustworthy, and they weren't. They took advantage of them. And so this is just a way of lashing out. And so, you know, it's not even just that, not even that, but just a lot of people look at you, not even if they, they might not even live that like that. They'll look at you like they hate you. Because that remind me of a, a saying I saw that says, you know, some people don't like you because your spirit ir irritates their demons. Some people just don't like you because they can see the spirit in you and they're automatically against it. I know, I've had that at work. I look at people, I like, you would think we used to date or something. Well, every time would look at me with this mean look and something, like, I don't even know you. But it's, it's just because that, and, and certain people they get along with because, you know, like the saying goes, birds of a feather flock together. So people they feel like not a threat to them, they're fine. But they can look at your spirit and see, okay, this person is, even though you might not even talk to them, you might not be doing nothing to them, they're irritated by you. Just like we talked about the men, the two men at the tombs. When they seen Jesus come around, they automatically got they automatically got shook and irritated. And he ran, that's when the one man ran to him and said, and begged him not to not to um send them to um the pit. Hell what it says, the Bible may say the abyss in one of the um, books. He said, Don't send don't torment us before the time. Why? And all what did Jesus do? All he did was just step on the scene. So that's what happens for a lot of people. All you do, you just walk into your job, you just walk in anywhere, and some people like you, some people you're gonna get those looks from. Like I said, you never you never know. But like I said, it's not me personally. You have a problem with the God I serve, it ain't me. I'm you you'll take it out on me. But I understand what the I understand what, who your real problem is with. You know why? Because they have a warrant in there, because probably because God's been dealing with them about what they're doing, but they want to be rebellious and still live the life they want to live. So, like I say, they talk about you, and every time I turn around, they lie on you, and this and that, and the world. Well, you know that's the enemy, because the father, because the devil's the father of lies. He came to kill, steal, and destroy. Every every time, it's always a problem with you. You just walk on the scene, and they always got to, it's always me, not nobody else. On looks, it ain't even about look. They probably don't see you. They probably see the spirit looking at them, and trying to, and they, they're resisting what's, what it's trying to tell them. Yeah, they so, start me up there, child. They fired me because um, I wouldn't call her Mr. they'll do that because, you know, they say out of respect, but that's what the world is. The world don't have no backbone to it. it the world allows any 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 perversity that it wants to do, it allow go on. Oh, yeah, and, the world. and the world will. They'll support it. And any, anybody that comes up against it, they'll have a, they'll lash out and have a problem with you. They'll try to label you as, you know, you're not, you know, you're not with us. But even Jesus said, if they did this in the green tree, what do you think they're doing a drop? If they hated me, what of course they going to do to you? Now, some things you have to take a stand for, and there are some things that you can address, but you just have to go about it a different way. Right. 
you know, just like you talked about the parade. Like, some people do go out there and, you know, with the signs and everything else, but there's always more than one way to skin a cat. Some people will attack it head on, and some people will be like, will be like doves and snakes, and will be cunning, and will do it other ways. There's more than one way to get to get your point across without being offensive. Like we said, we can disagree without being disagreeable. So you just have to, and in those situations, I would just say, pray to the Lord, ask him how, how to go about it. He'll give you the strategy to do it. You know, it's just like when you talked about with the cakes. You know, if they say, well, a cake for a wedding, that's one thing, but like how many other people have you made cakes for that may have been living that lifestyle and you don't know? Like, so what's the real issue? They're living this lifestyle or they're doing it for a wedding? So now you gotta decide what's the, what's the real issue is because I just believe- I actually do want two men I think there's a way of saying, well, I don't have that kind of memorabilia. <laughs> you know, I like to make a cake. I know you have a name. But I don't have to top it off with two men, you know, in tuxedo, you know. I don't even have that in my shop. But you think that, I mean, what, you should make a cake? I mean, really, you're just providing service because that's, that's just if they told you about it because a lot of people might not tell you what the cake for. They just say, they tell you they need one. Right. So, yeah. I mean. But yeah, I've seen it on, on the news where they wanted them to top it off with two men. And I think it, it could have been easy. Like, I don't even have that. I don't even order that. I don't have that. You can have them top. Yeah, they took them off. You can say that. Yeah. You can get your own top. We don't, have to, we don't have that top. Yeah. But we can right. make the cake for you. Cake. And love gives you like. Yeah. But yeah. you can get around with it, like you said. Yeah. The yeah. real good is even that evil has a right to the present. Because how do I know you're good unless evil comes to challenge you? You know what I mean? Well, evil has to present itself. It's by the law. Evil has that right to present itself to make sure that you're doing what you're practicing, what you're preaching. So we're going to be. And a lot of people fall. They fall in that test. The test is set, the trap is set. That was weight, mm -hmm. and the law was You know, the Lord was still with me recently. I had an incident over last year. This man and his wife. But anyway, she and the boys said they were still living together. I didn't know that they were boys. And we were um, so called to hold them in the ministry. But she had said that she was going to marry him back. So she finally got around to tell me that she was going to, that they was not married. But anyway, you know how the devil is a fault for a fault, so that never happened. But she said he went to jail, and she forced him. He was in jail, I guess, for about seven months, you know, like that. But she took that time to divorce him, which they had been together. Um, you know. Well, I know they had a child two years old, they had a girl and a boy. And I know if they, she got pregnant right away, or they were together two years before they got that child. So they was together for about 12 years, right? Mm -hmm. And um, she was saying, I said, so I really used to ask people that because people look for that, and I try not to fall in that lane. Well, what, what do you mean? Or you know, well, what happened? If they don't tell me what happened, then I just pray. You know what I'm saying? You know, oh, uh, girl, it's a mess that happened out there. I said, oh, really? I don't see well, what happened or what up, you know, because I tried to stay out that lane by seeing people get a lot of trouble behind that or gossiping behind that. So I tried to stay out that lane. And because I have been in that lane before, so I tried to stay out of it. So anyway, um, my daughter was like, well, we can look it up on the internet and, you know, you know, we can put his name. We got his whole name every day and find out what he's in jail for, blah, 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 blah. What was so bad that she jumped up in the voice so anyway, the Lord gave me a dream, and he said to me in this dream, if you want to look for the mess, you can find it. Mm -hmm. I got a tape on that. <laughs> and I was like, so I was like, oh my God. And he, he, the way he presented to me, it was so serious. When I say mess, I'm talking about I stuck my finger in the doo-doo. And he said, if you look for it, look at her finger, you can find it. Mm -hmm. So I told my daughter, I said, don't be. 
because when I was big, and that's what I ended up on. And, I, and he said, if you look professional, I'll And I said, don't, don't look it up, whatever, whatever. So I had to be able to, you know, stay in my lane as a Christian and continue to deal with him with love in, in order to whatever I would have found probably would have turned my whole uh, demeanor concerning him so that I could minister to him freely without digging up his messy past. That was real, real strong to me when the Lord said that to me. Yeah, that's what it's called a, a buzz of appetite. Wow. To where you, I mean, it happens in church too. That's why a lot of people don't get what they need out of church because you come to church for the wrong reason, looking for the wrong thing. And like you said, if you look for it, you'll find it. So if you want a word from the Lord, you can get it. Or do you come here and you're looking at what people are wearing? Are you criticizing sermons? Are you criticizing people who sing and you worried about who here and who not? Are you worried about the wrong thing? And say, you know, it's like, it's like if I say we're going, I'm gonna take everybody out to eat. And say we'll go to a buffet or something. I said, you know what? It's already done. I already got paid for. Whatever I want to get, get. So instead of you going to, you know, where they got the spreads out of the food and things, you go to the trash can and pick out what you want. That's the same thing. That's the same thing that a lot of people do when you have a spread that's set. When you got the word here, when you can get nourishment, you can get fed, you can get whatever you need, but you rather look in the trash can and get something out of there instead of getting what's being presented to. And so that's like, you know, with that, that's really. What happens with other people and their personal lives is really none of our business unless they come to us and we can give them counsel. But I'm not going to go out and figure out, oh, what happened, why y'all did this and did that. You know why? Because if the shoe was on the other foot and somebody else was going through, going online and trying to find out what you're doing, you would have an attitude about it. Why are you in my business? Why are you being nosy? This ain't got nothing to do with you. Well, take that same approach when you do with other people. That happened 10, 20 years ago. Yeah. It's it, online too. It's the same, it's the same, it's the same thing. You know, unless you unless you come to me with it, if you say, "Oh, so and so break up," oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Keep going. Ain't got, ain't really got nothing to do with me. Now, if you come to me for some advice, then I can give you some godly advice about you know what you're doing and what you're going through and things like that. But I'm not gonna search out to try to get all up in your business. Why? It ain't got nothing to do with me. Like they say, the same. Treat people the way you want to be treated. If you if you will want that people to respect your privacy when you're going through something. Like that, do the same thing for other people. So, I mean, it's just time and courtesy, really. But, you know, it's on page 22. It's on page yeah. All right, yeah. you guys go. But, um, you know, get back to sum up. Um, you know, it's just like, no matter what's going on, no matter what people are going through, we have to let them know that they can, that they haven't done anything that the Lord has turned their back on. That they can come back at any time, but they have to initiate that. They have to want to come back. Um, think of it like the, the prodigal son. You know, how the prodigal son, you know, went to his father, asked for his inheritance. He got all his money, went out, went to another land, spent it up, balled out, had a good time. And then when the famine hit the land and he was out of money, he didn't have nowhere to go. And somebody that he met in the land let him, you know, was outside in the field with him. He was eating with the hogs. And so he's living in conditions that were not for him. So he's in a, in a rut that he shouldn't be in until he comes to his senses and realizes, comes to his senses and realizes that what he left that his father had, even said, even the servants eating, they're still, and they still got more than enough. And so he decides to come back and he wants to come back and tell his father that you know, even though he's, he's saying that he let him down and he was just wanting to come back as a servant. But his father was looking for him to come back. And so he ran out to meet him. And that's the same way that the Lord does us. So even people who have been, you were saved or you were walking at one time and you backslid or even if you were just out in the world at all and you want to come back. God's looking for you. He wants to run and meet you. But if you're coming back with that heart and that to be restored and he came back the thing that stood out to me that the son came back and said, I want to be a servant. And that's the thing. When people come with a service heart, he didn't treat him like a he didn't treat him like a servant. He said, he talked to one of the other servants and said, Go get a ring, go get a robe. No, I'm going to restore you to where you were. And that's what the Lord wants to do with us. That's what he wants to do with people. 
And so that's why we have to take the time to let them know that no matter what's going on, the Lord is ch He's after you. Not to do you harm, but he's after you because he loves you. Um, I think, what was it? And Luke, um, I think Luke 8, 34 was like, when he was talking to Jerusalem, he said, many times I wanted to gather you like a hen gathers her chicks, but you won't let me. And that's the same thing the Lord done with other people, where he's, he's reaching out and putting people in their paths, and, you know, like I say, the, the word is more, there's more exposure to the gospel and the word of the Lord than it was 15, 20 years ago with all the internet, you got CDs, you got all these TV shows and things. And then, you plus we get people. So, I'm trying to reach you. <laughs> Will you let me? I'm trying to bring you in here and, and take care of you, but you won't let me. And that's the biggest thing with people is you have to realize that the life you're living, yeah, it, it may be fun, but it's not going to take you anywhere. That Lord wants to give you, not just give you life, but give it to you more abundantly. And so that's where we come in as being the messengers to where people are going to do what they want to do. If they, they act you know, hostile towards us, that's fine. They, we understand that they're against the Lord and not against us. We're still going to show them that love anyway. We're still going to let our light shine. We're still going to present Jesus to them because they're doing it now, but we never know when that one day when they finally come to their senses and realize that, man, this person's not against me. This person's been trying to help me. The Lord's been using this person to try to help me. Or, you know, whoever else we come back to, because not just them, whoever else is watching me. Like you said, you never know who's watching you on your jobs or when you're out, out and about, when you're at your school or whatever. And so that's what we have, we have to do. But we just let them know that, you know, when you're looking for something from the Lord, don't just let it be just something temporary. The Lord wants to give you more than that. He wants to not only restore you, but he wants to give you the freedom to go out and act as a, and in a way that he would act if he was here walking the day. You know, he wants you, he wants to use you to heal people. He wants to use you to deliver people. He wants to use you to cast devils out. Will you allow him to do it through you? Will you spend time with him to where your faith is great enough to where, and not only your faith, but like you say, when you're listening to the word of the Lord, to where you're in tune enough to where you can hear the Lord talk to where you know how to act in certain situations, to where if he wants you to go and touch this person that you go. Or maybe he wants you just to go tell this person, you know what, go tell them that I love them. Or will you do it and will you not have a second thought about it? So that's why he wants you not only to restore us, but he wants us to be free to do what he wants done because we've allowed him to take territory within us. We've allowed to get rid of those insecurities, those doubts, whatever, so that he can work through us so that we can go out and try to take that same territory and other people by telling them about the Lord and how good he is and what he wants to do for them and how he loves them. He, and he wants to be a part of your life. He's not out to hurt you. He's not out to destroy you. If the Lord wanted to destroy you, you wouldn't be here right now. You would. And so, you know, we have to let them know that God's not against you. God is for you. Like I said, nobody takes nails on a cross and they're against you. You got people that say they love you and all that, but they're not going to go do that. I don't care who you are. We're not taking I'm not getting nailed to a cross for nobody. But yet still, he was willing to do it because he loved us. Because he cares for us. And because he's working through us to show other people that also. And so, like I said, everybody's not going to turn around in the time we want to. But you just got to sh keep showing it. Because there was a time where we didn't want to hear it. Where we were out in the world doing our own thing. And then we finally came to our senses and we finally let the Lord in and look where we are now. So we have to have that same with other people, even though they, they're going to go out and do what they want to do. Some people are going to come and some people are not. But you still give everybody the same message. And if they attack you, then they say rejoice because the, the prophets before you went through the same thing. So you're in good company. And all they did, all they did was just tell people that the kingdom of God was at hand. He told them that what the, the Lord So. We shouldn't be no different. So don't think it's strange when, when they lie on you and they come and, you know, put all these false allegations against you and, and friends turn on you because the same thing happened to Jesus. Same thing happened to the apostles. Same thing happened to many people after that. Why? Well, because we're doing the work of our Father. Because the world is just against They hate truth. And until they learn to love truth, they're going to continue to do the same thing. But you keep walking in truth. And then when you catch you a situation that you don't really know how to handle it, go talk to the Lord, let the Lord give you 
a strategy on how to handle it. Because then again, you may want you to do it, but he may not want you to handle it at that time. So he may wait till a certain time and then he'll give you the words you need to say. Or he may even let somebody else come in and handle it for you. Well, you ain't got to do nothing again. Do nothing against it. Hold your peace, let the Lord fight your battles. So that's that trust that we have to have in us. But, you know, we just have to but just remember whatever we need from the Lord, we just got to walk in it. Take action for whatever you want the Lord to do, take the action. If you say, you know, leg hurting the Lord, I'm healed, then sometimes you have to act like a healed person would. Sometimes you're gonna have you have to fight. You have to fight to get your healing, to fight to get your deliverance, and you have to fight to keep it also. And so that's what a lot of people don't get taught. It's just, you know, just believe and then, you know, you'll have it. Well, yeah, that's true. But then I'll um, give one, one more example, then we'll close it out. There was a woman that was at a, um, I heard about it, that was at, she was at a meeting, she was in a wheelchair. And she went to the meeting and, you know, the world was preached and the preacher came and laid hands on her and said, you know, she, she was healed. And she got up at the chair and was walking. So she was walking in the hill. But the next day her family came, seeing her up walking and said, what are you doing out there? You need to be back in that chair. You don't need to be walking around doing this, this. And so what she do? She go back in the chair, don't try to walk again. So sometimes when you know, if you know that the Lord done it and you're walking in it, you have to go, you have to ignore family, friends, and all that. Walk in your, walk in your hymn, walk in your deliverance. Like I said, who he set free is free indeed. You believed it enough to act on it, and you were actually walking and standing, and ain't no telling the last time she even been out that chair, other than like the wash or something, or even attempted to try to stand up. But yet still, even though it may not be, like you may not be walking under full power, even if you're taking baby steps, you're walking. The more you keep doing, the stronger you get. So you have to ignore people who don't understand what you have, what you've been given, because you know they think, oh, you're so supposed to, you're in that chair for a reason. No, I was in that chair for a reason. I'm up walking for a reason too. So you got to keep walking in it. You got to have that determination. And the thing for Christians is you have to be stubborn in what you believe. Once you believe it, you can't let people talk you out of it. They ain't worry about what no reports say, no doctor's reports, or what anybody else. I'm gonna keep pressing on. That's why I say steadfast. Be steadfast in what you believe. And so that's what we have to do. And that's what we're trying to get other people to do also. To say, you know what, don't worry about what they say. Doctor say you got six months to live. What does the Lord say? The doctor didn't give you a life the Lord did. You know, think about what um was a Hezekiah. What the Lord said, well, he was going to die, but he went to the Lord, went to prayer, and the Lord said, okay, you get 30 more years. I mean, there's been lots of people that got diagnosis from doctors that said they were going to die, and they still live in the day. Got 30 years ago, you still living, and seeing kids graduate from college, grandkids, all that. What happened in those six months? You're not in control of my life. The Lord is. The Lord has final say so. So we go to the Lord when we hear those things. We bring, we bring our attention to the Lord, to where... Well, we, if we were in fear, let us let him restore us in faith. To say, don't listen to that. You can listen to what I told you. You're going to live. You're going to be here for a while. I got work for you to do. You ain't dying in six months. I'm not, unless you try to take your life on your own hands. But other, by, other than that, I ain't, taking, I ain't ready to take you from here. So get ready to work. Get ready to reach out to people. Get ready to see your family, see your family grow up and prosper. And so you have to have that kind of attitude. Like I say, you can't give, you, and that attitude can't go off on other people if you don't have it yourself. Like I say, you know, both people are preparing to die. We're trying to prepare people to live. To prepare, to prepare people to walk in a way that's upright in the Lord, where the Lord can work through them. And they can, people can see the goodness of the Lord, whether they like it or not. Because regardless of what you say, I'm going to let my light shine. Lie, again, lie on me all you want to. It ain't going to get no, guess what? It ain't going to stop me from serving God. It ain't going to stop me from walking here. And if the Lord take me off this job, that's because he got something better for me. Because no matter what you do, babe, no matter what you do, I'm not leaving this job. I'm not leaving here to the Lord get good and ready. And when one door closed, another one opened. So, like I say, that's what the Lord does for us. And that's what the Lord wants to do for other people. But like I said, we have to get it, we have to get it settled within ourselves first. And once we do that, then we can go encourage other people and talk to them and say, don't worry about what the Lord, don't worry about what the world says. What does the Lord say? Who does, who does the Lord say you are? If you don't know, that's why you need to spend time with him to find out who you are. Because once you find out you're esteem in the Lord, you ain't worried about what other people say you are, what they think you are. Amen. 
But worry about the one who created you, the one who gave you life, the one who gave you your gifts and abilities. That's the person you worry about pleasing the most. So that's the only person that can do more than everybody else can talk. He's the one that's going to open these doors and going to bring bring favor among people to where they're doing things that, you know, I don't know why they're doing this for me. You know why? Because of the goodness of the Lord. And, and in turn, and you're, going to, you're going to put you in a position where you can do things for people too. So, all right, I'm going to do that. All right, uh, <laughs> thank God for the lesson. Uh, thank God for all of you here and all your comments. Yes. Always welcome that. So, uh, next lesson. <clears throat> we touched on this a little bit, but next lesson we're talking about the danger of unforgiveness. Uh, central verse is coming from Matthew 6.15. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. So we're going to talk about that. And you know, just like we talked a little bit about judgment, judgment and unforgiveness are really one go hand in hand. So we'll we'll get into that next week. All right. If all hearts and minds are clear. We'll pray. We'll speak the blessing over you, and we'll be dismissed. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you once again for allowing us to be into your house for more time. We thank you for our life, health, and strength, Father. We thank you for protecting us from danger seen and unseen. And Lord, we ask that you forgive us for any sins that we committed. Lord, we thank you for the lesson for the lesson tonight, Lord. Uh, we thank you about teaching us and reminding us about being restored and walking and freedom. Because Lord, who you set free is free indeed. We understand that this world has a lot of people who are in bondage. A lot of people who serve you are still in some bondage of some shape or form. But Lord, we just know that you are a healer, you are a deliverer. That you want to free us from the grips of sin. That you want to work through us. That the same thing you've done to us, you want to do through others. You want us to be your ambassadors, to be your vessel. To where we can go through and carry out, carry out your will. The work that you started, the work that you finished. And just to continue it on, Father God. So that your glory will be spread across the earth and that your will will be done. And Lord, we thank you for those who are here. We thank you for all the comments that were given. Uh, we thank you for those who have desired to be here and couldn't, and for those who will be watching at home. Lord, we ask that you will touch those families who are sick and bereaving, Lord, that you will be the comforter and the healer that you are. And Lord, we ask that you will just stop by and that you would place your arms around George, Father God, that you would bless his body and his soul. Father, you are the one who created us. Our souls belong to you, our lives belong to you, whether we know it or not, we've been bought with the price. But we know that George is yours, Father God. You have a work for him to do. And even though we are we've been rebellious in one shape or form, that you haven't given up on him, Father God. You know, just like the you had that parable with the fig tree that wasn't growing for three years and the people wanted to get rid of it, but you said, Let's till around it, let's add some more care to it. And we're just asking that you would do the same thing with George, Father God, that you would touch his mind, touch his body, touch his soul. Let him know that you are here, that it's time to stop running, that it's time to carry on the work that you have, Father God. We just ask that you would protect him, that you would just heal his body inside and out. Whatever ailment is there, dear God, we just ask that you would relieve it in the name of Jesus, Father God. And we just thank you for doing this in advance, Father God. And Lord, for anybody else that's we know any family or friends that are going through any situations, we just ask that you would show up and show out, Father God. We just ask that you would just touch those situations, that you would open those doors, turn those lives around, that you would show favor where favor wasn't before, Father God, and that you would get the glory out of everything that happens because we depend on you. We can't do this without you, and you don't want us to do this without you, God. So we just thank you for doing that tonight, Lord. Um, and 
And if you delay your return, then we will see each other again in school, Father God. Lord, we ask that you will bless us indeed, yes. enlarge our territory, yes. that your hand will be with us to keep us yes. from evil, so yes. we don't cause pain. Yes. Lord, you bless us, you keep yes. us. Your face shines upon us, your grace yes. unto, unto us. You lift your countenance upon us and you give us peace. Yes. So Lord, we invite you to rise up, yes. to let your enemies be scattered, yes. and let those that hate you flee before them. Yes. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you.